This video is about the consequences of inequality and the policies we therefore might put in place to try and correct this. So inequality is a really big problem in most, if not all countries. And most people would agree that high levels of inequality is generally a bad thing, possibly apart from really super rich people might not agree with that. But we do need to be able to examine and analyse the really concrete economic consequences of this as well. So one really great con concept to use when talking about that is the law of diminishing marginal utility. And that means that economic welfare could actually be increased with a more equal distribution of income. Because if you think about billionaires, people who earn huge amounts of money, have got so much money, they almost don't really know what to do with it. And if you gave a billionaire an extra 10 grand, they'd probably hardly notice. Whereas if you gave an extra 10 grand to one of the poorest in society, it would make the absolute world of difference. So that sort of redistribution, because of this law of diminishing marginal utility, because as you earn more and more and more, the additional utility you gain from any further increases to that income is going to start to reduce, then that sort of redistribution can quite objectively increase economic welfare. And building on that point, High levels of inequality can actually reduce overall spending in an economy because those on higher incomes have what we call a lower marginal propensity to consume. So that means they are actually going to spend a smaller proportion of any increases to their income. So if you think again about that billionaire, um, they spend a much lower proportion of their income. So they're not only going to not benefit from that £10,000, they probably wouldn't even spend it at all. Whereas you give a low income earner that extra £10,000, they'll probably actually spend all of it, which means they have a higher marginal propensity to consume compared to those on higher incomes. So that's actually good for the economy, it's good for GDP, it's good for jobs, if we can get more spending by redistributing incomes in that way. And finally, we've got the economic and social cost of poverty, because inequality, high levels of inequality, is very likely to, to mean high levels of poverty as well. And as well as the moral and ethical problems with having very high levels of poverty, you've also got a very significant economic and social cost with that as well. So uh, people who are in poverty much more like unlikely to be very productive because of the problems that are caused by that poverty, which will result in lost output. Um, and we'll look at that in more detail in the video on poverty. To balance against these costs of inequality, we might also see some benefits with having some level of inequality in a society as well. So if you had a perfectly equal society, it would actually be quite difficult for anyone to see any incentive of working. And so allowing people to work towards higher incomes provides an incentive effect. It allows rewards for hard work, for risk taking, allows profit to be earned as a reward for entrepreneurship. And that really is crucial to the functioning of a marketing economy. And with more profit, more entrepreneurship, more jobs, comes higher GDP. And with that will come higher tax revenue, which can then be used to be spent on public services, which will help those on lower incomes as well. So that's sometimes referred to as the trickle down effect, as these higher incomes work their way down to people on lower incomes naturally using those systems. And in a video introducing income distribution, we distinguish between equality and equity. And some would argue that an unequal distribution of income is, is actually more equitable, as people who work hard can bear the fruits of their labour. But this argument probably holds to a certain degree and to a, to a relatively small level of inequality, but I'm not sure that many people would argue the extreme inequalities that we see in so many societies today could be viewed as equitable. But again, that's a normative argument and something that different people would have different views on. So if we accept that even with a few benefits, that high levels of inequality is a really big problem, the question comes of how we should try and resolve this. 
So what policies could we use to try and reduce inequality and alleviate poverty in our society? So possibly the most obvious, we could think about welfare benefits. So they're actual direct cash payments which are used to redistribute income. Uh, so we have in the UK universal credit for people on low incomes, job seekers allowance you can claim if you're unemployed, just a couple of examples of these benefit payments which are really important in reducing levels of inequality. Some would argue they don't go far enough but again that's a normative question. Benefits in kind, so you might not think about the redistributive effects of free health care and education, certainly in the UK, we're, we're so used to those things being commonplace. But allowing free access to these services, irrespective of income, is really, really important in trying to reduce inequality because it allows everyone access to them regardless of their income. Um, and it wouldn't be the case that only people on who, who earn enough would be able to afford to pay for them. We've got as well a progressive tax system in the UK, certainly that's, that's the case for income tax. And that means that we take a larger proportion of income from those who earn the most. So it's not just the case that people who earn more pay more in absolute terms, but they should be paying a bigger proportion of their income in tax as well. And that happens through increasing bands of income tax. So there's the personal, personal allowance, which you don't pay any income tax on and then it goes up to 20% as a basic rate up to 40% at the higher rate and then up to 45% um, when you get to earning very large amounts of income. And then finally we could think about policies like the nat national minimum wage or living wage which can be used to increase the income of lowest earners. So that's just using a regulatory approach to try and ensure a fair wage and reduce inequality through labour markets. And finally, we need to evaluate these policies that we might use to try and reduce inequality and alleviate poverty. And as with pretty much any policy, in evaluating it, you can try and consider the opportunity costs. So particularly the ones that involve spending, we can always evaluate by discussing what the alternatives are and how that money could be better spent. Specifically for the national minimum wage, this one, that's got its own set of evaluation in terms of the distorting effect on labour markets. And we looked at that separately in a video on the national minimum wage for a bit more detail. Now, one of the benefits of inequality, we said, was the incentive effect that it can have. And so we do need to be very careful with messing with these incentive effects too much. And the Laffer curve shows that if a tax rate goes too high, the revenue that is received from that tax starts to drop as you remove people's incentives to work. So you need to be really careful with how you're implementing these policies so you don't take away those incentives to earn. And then all of these policies really can be evaluated with reference to the benefits and the costs of inequality. So by implementing these policies, you are hopefully going to be reducing inequality. So the good thing is that it will reduce those costs of inequality that we've seen. But in doing so, you've also got to consider that you're going to lose out on some of those potential benefits of inequality, like we spoke about in terms of the incentive effects.